Let me let me just ask you this, uh, Dr. Mm. Tari. You 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 are the chairman of the National Council for Persons with Disabilities. People, members who you say, former first lady Lucy Kibaki was very instrumental in helping. What, how, how did the relationship begin between your, your council and former first lady? Immediately when she became the first lady. Because uh, with all odds, she became the first lady and a wife to a person with disability at that particular time. Okay. You know Kibaki uh, he was, he temporarily was accident, right? became a person with disability and mm -hmm. was on a wheelchair. Yeah. Actually, the act of parliament the Person with Disability Act of 2003 came to be because Kibaki ascended to be law when he was actually a person with disability. And this bill has been lying in Parliament since 1970s. A person with disability have been advocating for their rights. Nobody actually listened to them. But when then the president was the president of the republic and was a wheelchair and was a person with disability, there was actually a need Mm -hmm. to now in, uh, internalize and uh, develop an act that they now gave back to National Council for Personal Disability, a saga, a semi-autonomous government agency that is in charge of disability issues, an arm of government mm -hmm. that is in charge of disability issues. So immediately when the first lady, uh, Mama Lucy Kibaki, became the first lady, we started now interacting because one, uh, her husband became our member. Okay. And then uh, secondly, uh, we really needed to be closer to her because uh, most we ladies run away once they learn that we are disabled. So we <laughs> sure. feared that... She stuck, she stuck <laughs> yeah, next we to her husband that. and we could see nah. that, we could see that <laughs> during the time that just Kibaki uh, went into power. She was always next to him. Next to him. He was in a wheelchair but mama was just always next to him. In fact in a wheelchair, not even a wheelchair, it was like a wheelbarrow. You know, <laughs> if, you see, yeah. if you see how the leg was actually being put, you know. So the first thing that came to us is that we have to really be closer to the first lady so that uh, because we feared she may run away mm -hmm. and uh, from, from now the disabled person, <laughs> yeah, the person with disability. But uh, she stuck with her. That was the first uh, signal that was sent to everybody that persons with disability are people who are able differently. Yeah. Because the whole country accepted uh, His Excellency Mwai Kibaki on a wheelchair that he can lead the nation. And that on a wheelchair, he has something to offer to the nation. The first lady, uh, former first lady, accepted Kibaki that despite the fact that he was on a wheelchair, he can be a husband and a father to my children and will go on and stick with him. So. Uh, because uh, nowadays we have so many people joining our club through road accident, through violence, and even the Uruma building, and we send our mm, condolences it has left to some people. Also, with we have left our, uh, some people also joining, uh, have joined our club. So <clears throat> it was a very good signal from the first lady that yes, they are disabled, but they are able different. So that is how uh, she got involved with the, with the she, National Council. For yes, Peoples. immediately she started now uh, being close to the National Council for Personal Disability. Uh, at that particular time, I was uh, out uh, of the university personally on suspension. I was suspended uh, because I was a student leader. I was a student chairman in the year 2000, and then I was suspended by um, Professor Francis Kishaga. I was out, but immediately. Uh, when uh, uh, Kibaki came into power, he gave us presidential amnesty. I remember students went to, uh, to see the first lady and the former first lady just joked mm. that Wanafunzi Warudi hata kulikuwa na kiweta hapo. Oh, okay. So, so let them come back. <laughs> so they were so, advocating for you to come so, back to, to school. So we were given presidential amnesty <laughs> and uh, we came back to the university. And uh, while I was in the university, uh, Mama Lucy Kibaki was very close to National Council for Personal Disability. Uh, I was appointed as a board member of National Council for Personal Disability in the year 2010 and uh, 2011. And we interacted. But let me assure you, there are hundreds of students with disability who have benefited from Mama Lucy Kibaki. Mm -hmm. But she didn't want it to come to the media. Okay. She used to say that, let God appreciate, not human beings. But the moment you bring it into the open, it will be now, uh, it will be now human beings appreciate, 
which is not the way she actually wanted. Mm -hmm. mm. Now that we are in a, you know, we her final journey, we are just about to lay her to rest on Saturday in Nyeri County this weekend. Uh, it's, it's in order that we talk about the good things she did, and this is what we are doing this morning on Good Morning Kenya. Of course, you can continue to send your message of condolences and, uh, you know, just something that you want to say about former First Lady Lucy Kibaki on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Safina Ching, at Safin underscore Ching, on Facebook, Safina Ching, or at KBC Channel One on Twitter, or Good, hashtag Good Morning Kenya. You can follow us on those uh, social media platforms and drop your message of condolence. We'll share some of those before the show uh, ends. And just to continue with what we were sharing, we want to talk about what former First Lady Mama Lucy did. These projects, other than assisting students with disabilities, what other things do you remember her for? First of all, see where Mama Lucy Kibaki Hospital is. It is in the slums. The hospital of that uh, statue Actually, most of them are in uh, what we call the well-to-do estates. But uh, hers is actually in there. Uh, that give a picture, only a small picture, of what type of a person she was. She really wanted to assist those weaker members of our society. And uh, apart from that, uh, several uh, persons with disability have benefited from assisted devices bought by Mama Lucy Kiba. And she actually channeled those assisted devices sometimes through National Council for Personal Disabilities, through some DPOs, uh, disabled uh, persons organizations uh, that advocate for their persons and civil societies. Uh, she actually, on several occasions, uh, been able to like uh, attend our functions. There was a function of Mrs. Disability Kenya okay. chapter which she actually is confident eh? disability Kenya chapter she actually attended in person yes and be part of those persons with disability and uh, give them kind of motivation that you are able differently you are beautiful you can also compete on that platform and nowadays we have an award for misconfident or Miss disability Kenya courtesy of the initiative of the former first lady and you see ladies with disability coming out now and say, uh, I feel confidence that they can also be married, they can also be pretty, pretty queens. You see, mm -hmm. that, that uh, initiative was an initiative that I can tell you may be the only initiative in Africa, in African countries. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it was an initiative of the former oh, first, first lady. lady Lucy yes. Of course, you also mentioned something about, you know, uh, people with disabilities fighting, uh, you know, pushing for their rights and it was not happening for a very long time. And uh, one thing I would want to know, did, did she play a role in helping, you know, push the agenda of people with disability in, in government? Did she, did she push the agenda of the rights? Safi, as I told you earlier, uh, most of the things that were done by the Kibakis were things that you only saw the fruits. Ours was to reap the fruits. But uh, specifically, I'm 100% sh sure that she played a role in making sure that the, the, the president pushed for this uh, act to be debated in parliament and to be published immediately and uh, to be, uh, the signature to be appended to. Because uh, it was very difficult to, to know if she actually played the role. But when you, you meet her in person, she knows the Persons with Disability Act of 2003 word by word. Many, mm -hmm. then she had read and analyzed it and probably pushed it from uh, behind the scenes. And uh, I may not say that she played a role, because but, I don't know, but I believe she played a role. Wow. From how she understood the act, understood even more than us, who are board members of the National Council for Persons with Disability, more than most of the uh, advocates of persons with disability, meaning she actually played a part mm -hmm. in a role. How, how would you describe ma former First Lady? Uh, Lucy Kibaki, what character, what, what would you say about her in terms yes. of the person that she was? Yes, many people uh, actually saw her as a bit aggressive, <laughs> firm, <yeah. laughs> <Sure. laughs> and actually somebody who wants everybody to be displayed. But for us, persons with disability, we saw a mother in her. And uh, of course, if you did a mistake or you lied to her, she will then then tell you no 
that one is wrong. And I don't need, I don't want that one. And I think that is the character that people associate with her being aggressive. She was not aggressive, she was firm, but very gentle as a mother, mm -hmm. but very firm. That if it is wrong, it is wrong. A spade is a spade, it's not a big spoon. And that is sometimes what we don't like as Kenyans. We don't like to, to be told, told the truth. <laughs> and the truth is always very bitter. bitter so yeah. when you are told, <laughs> this is wrong. So for you, she Like uh, <laughs> when I saw in the media, rumors that were going on in the media that uh, she stormed into a house of somebody playing loud music, you know. <laughs> Surely in a neighborhood, you will only be out of your common sense to play very loud music to disturb everybody. Because if actually Mama Lucy, and you know, uh, with the kind of life she was living in, she had a compound. So if this music can cross over, this compound, well, it, it, yes, it, it has to be too loud. loud. <laughs> and I can tell you, if that person was in Uruma Estate, where then the houses are That's squeezed true. together, then you will have disturbed the whole neighborhood. So when they are told, shut, you are, put your music, music a bit lower, because it is for you, it is not for everybody else. You know, you may be uh, now Safi Yache. You are playing uh, your music that you like. You are a dot, a dot com. Me, I'm an elder. I want those <laughs> music here, Saman. <laughs> and then you are playing yours and disturbing mine. Mm -hmm. And you know, so you, actually she was actually fun. So, so yeah. for you, her aggressiveness was her way of, you know, telling you the truth. Telling you, whether you, you like it or not. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> but you know, Kenyans don't like to be told the truth. Mm. If today I, I tell you, no, 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 this is not what I like, and then you start now saying I'm, I'm aggressive. So people mistook the character of Mama Lucy being a truthful person and speaking her mind mm -hmm. that she was aggressive. But to us, person with disability, she was the best mother who will tell you, yes, this is the way, this is wrong, and she was very passionate. Now imagine just seeing a media uh, clip that there is a, a mother with disability and her child has passed the exam mm -hmm. and she may not be able to raise, in fact, they did not say she's not able, she may not be able to raise the school fees of her daughter because she's a single mother and she's a hawker. She came in, paid everything, gave, gave her pocket money, almost adopted the, the child, but she did not want the whole media to know, to know and now that she's, this is what you I say I the doing. girl is in university. In the university. Well, and, and it, yes, will, so it, will, it is fruits. a legacy that will yes, remain those are among, the among other things, of course. I'm yes. interested in knowing, are there other new initiatives that she brought in? The moment she became part of the National Council for People with Disabilities, is there anything new that she brought that wasn't there before that you will remember her for? Uh, first of all, the National Development Fund of Kenya, which is uh, run by Christine, uh, I'm sure she has visited there on several occasions. Uh, I'm aware she went there almost, I think I remember almost five times, encouraging them, and she was instrumental in the increase of our location day in, day out. Because National Council for Personal Disability started with an allocation from the government of 20 million. And to quote her word, this is, there was a time she said, this is peanuts, it's not enough. Because mm -hmm. persons with disability is a bigger population in Kenya. It is a, the biggest tribe in Kenya. So, uh, bit by bit, now our allocation is almost 2 billion. We thank the Kibaki administration. It increased our allocation to almost 700 million. And now the Jubilee administration came in and took over. And I think um, uh, Margaret, our first lady, was just trying to fit in the shoes of uh, now, now the Lucy. form uh, Lucy, and that is why there was that continuity in the increase of the allocation to the National Council for Personal Disability. Mm -hmm. But it was our initiative that this is very little money compared to the population that is supposed to serve, and compared to the marginalisation of this group that is supposed to be served by this money. So, in terms of support, we see you seem to be saying she did a lot in terms of supporting persons with disabilities. Uh, some leaders are, uh, are good at giving money and dishing out assistant aid, but they are never there physically to be part of the programs and the initiatives. How different was it? Uh, was Mama part? Was it? Was she involved? Would she come and spend time with the children or the people with disabilities? Yes, you know our leaders are good at uh, maybe media and publicity. They give out and dish out money, 
returns of favors, either in terms of uh, votes or uh, sometimes favors in terms of publicity, that they are doing this so that they can earn some bonker points in their political mileage. But Mama Lucy was so different. She was not dishing money. You visit the uh, state house, you visit her, you, uh, be assured. You'll only maybe have a cup of coffee <laughs> or sometimes <laughs> some water, but you'll not come out with a, a small bag with money that politicians are good at giving. But you'll come out of that house a different person because she will motivate you, she will encourage you. And when you request for assistance, like, as far as it is not assistance on a personal level, she will actually confirm that she will push for that, such assistance. Like we wanted the amendment of our bill because, you know, it was passed, our act was passed hardly. Now that the head of state was on a wheelchair, there was a need. So they just took it from the archives and uh, passed it the way it was. So we had started a process of uh, reviewing our act. So it is a bill, it is still lying. But uh, actually she was very instrumental in, in organizing for stakeholders to come, put the, give some input, legal officers to come and try and uh, train us and assist us in coming up with a very good bill. So she was very instrumental. But she didn't want a situation whereby her services are seen as a political tool mm. or a, something, to earn hey, something to earn from it, publicity, and something that was for vote searching. You know, she didn't want something like that. Mm -hmm. And actually, most of the time, she said, no, no, let us put it cool. We will do what is supposed to be done. I will tell His Excellency, and it will be done. Mm -hmm. Yes. In terms of uh, you know pushing for the rights of persons with disabilities, what would you term as uh, the challenges that you still experience in trying to do that? There are so many challenges. One, uh, it is like there is that perception that persons with disability are beggars. There are people who are supposed only to be on the street begging, and such messages and such signals are being so uh, sent out there, even from. Uh, our own prime minister. As we speak now, there is a 1.2 billion Kenya shillings, which is a cash transfer for persons with severe disability. The ministry have said the council and disabled themselves are not able to handle that money. And they want to take it back to the ministry so that they can themselves administer that money. And they are targeting specifically the 15% administrative uh, money. But the most important thing is that the message they are sending there, mm -hmm. that persons with disability are useless, they are not able to manage their own fund, it must be managed by other people. And you go and see the cartels that have been in the Ministry of Labor. We have been having international forums, especially international forums for persons with disability. Every year we go to New York, the United Nations headquarters, to attend the assembly of state party, parties on the convention on the rights of persons with disability. But go to the minister. For the past five years, not a single person with disability has been sent to their True. own forum from the Ministry of Labor. Mm -hmm. what, what message are you sending? The saying persons with disability cannot present themselves, represent themselves. They are going for their own uh, forums, and it is persons without disability who are being sent to those forums. If today we have uh, an international women forum and all what Kenya sent are men, what will happen? What message are you sending there? So, so what's, what's your recommendation? What's, what's your recommendation? My recommendation that is specific issue. Yes, my recommendation is so easy and so simple. Uh, there is a lot of gains we have gained through the assistance of a previous government, the former first lady specifically take back regime because it was the one that brought the act of parliament that uh, gave back to National Council for Persons with Disability. I want to tell persons with disability, we cannot relent on the gains we have already gained. We only need that uh, we will continue getting some more gains. But we cannot allow anybody, an individual with selfish interest, to snatch something that we have gained. If that cash transfer has to be administered 
by the Ministry of Social Services, the Ministry of Labor, then I have to be brought a list of people who will directly be administering that money. And 70% of those persons must be persons with disability. Without that, we will not accept and will not agree for the consolidation of that cash transfer as one kit to be administered by people without disability. Because nothing for us without us. Nothing for us without us. That's very powerful. Mm. Back to what you're talking about, tribute to former First Lady Lucy Kibaki. Now that uh, you know we are in her final journey, what will you miss about her? Uh, <laughs> we'll miss her a lot. Uh, first of all, uh, she was an entertainer. Uh, when she took to the stage to dance, you realize that uh, she was a person full of life and full of passion. And uh, when uh, His Excellency Mwai Kibaki was on a wheelchair and her being always on her side, persons with disability, we, f we felt very confident. We really miss that uh, touch of a wife closer to her husband who was on a wheelchair. That is what we want uh, the, the, uh, to send that message out there uh, for ladies and uh, that despite the fact that we are disabled, we can also be very good husbands, we can be very good uh, wives and, and fathers. So always be closer to us the way our first, uh, the former first lady was closer to His Excellency Mwai Kibaki. Uh, I'm sure even if we have recovered because of technology, we have not really recovered fully. He is still a person limping and a person with disability. And uh, she, she has stayed with, with him throughout. Uh, we will miss a lot about her. You know, you know it was also entertaining. You know, Kibaki was a man of few words. And whenever uh, uh, Kibaki gave very few words, uh, Lucy was there in hand to add something and a flavor. You know, Pia Chakula, Ikuliki, Bila Chuvi, Pilipili, Zazimini, Unajua, Kuna Mtu Mungena Napenda Kitu Tamu, Kuna Mtu Mungena Napenda Kitu Enyi Kuna Pilipili Kidogo, so it depends on your taste. So actually the taste came out. You know, most, uh, most of the time people were very good in giving written speech that is already uh, seen, it has been uh, put a lot of vocabulary, but I like because she brought the flavor into the Kenyan leadership or whatever by bringing a bit of some pilipili so that we, we, we can take it. You know there are people who like the pilipili. Mm. Yes. You know, classic to got my class curry pekak. Wow. So yeah, a pilipili I love what you know fry. <laughs> Thank you so much. We will be continuing with this discussion, but uh, Samuel Jeroge on the other side of the studio just to give us uh, a few feedback from our viewers and some, uh, some issues and some concerns and some uh, messages of condolences that are being given about former First Lady Lucy Kibaki. On to you, Sam. Thank you so much, Mr. Peter Of course, quite a discussion you are having there. And uh, to start us off is, of course, when the news broke that the First Lady had died, various leaders went on Twitter to actually pass their messages of condolences. Remember, you can also do exactly that. The hashtag is tribute to Mama Lucy Kibaki. You can tweet us at KBC Channel 1 at Sami one Jaroge at Safin underscore Achen and at Marto Bahati. Let's first get to appreciate what the leaders said or have been saying about uh, the death or the tragic loss of Mama Lucy Kibaki. I'll start with one right here at U Kenyatta, that is the president Uhuru Kenyatta said it is with deep sense of sadness and loss that uh, I've learned of the untimely death of the former First Lady, Her Excellency Mrs. Lucy Kibaki, and uh, Deputy uh, President uh, William Ruto. His tweet read, It is with deep uh, sorrow that I have learned of the tragic death of Mama Lucy Kibaki while undergoing treatment at uh, uh, London or in London. At Sakaji Johnson, Sad to hear of the passing of the former First Lady, Mama Lucy Kibaki. My deep condolences to His Excellency Mwai Kibaki and his family. And also getting to Chief Justice William Mutunga. We surely belong to Allah and to him we shall return. Rest in peace, former First Lady Mama Lucy Kibaki. Ambassador Amina Mohammed uh, tweeted and said, Her Excellency Lucy Kibaki 
who was an extraordinary woman with remarkable strength of character, a gracious first lady, proud mother, and a devoted wife. Senator Moses Wetangula, Weta family, Bungoma County, and the nation send sincere condolences to her excellence, to his excellency, Mwai Kibaki, and family of the demise of Mama Lucy. Kibaki Ababu Namwamba said, I mourn Mama Lucy Kibaki, whose strength of character was real still, and condole with our retired president, Kibaki. And uh, from our neighbors in Uganda, we've got Kiza Besije. My thoughts and prayers are with His Excellency Mwai Kibaki, family and friends, and all Kenyans upon the passing of Mrs. Lucy Kibaki. May she rest in peace today. A requiem mass will be held at Consulate Shrine beginning 9 a.m. Of course, we are inviting you, 9.30 a.m., we are inviting you to tweet. The hashtag is tribute to Mama Lucy Kibaki at KBC Channel 1 is the Twitter handle at uh, Sami one Njoroge at Safin underscore Acheng or at Marto Bahati. So far, that is it. We wanted to appreciate what leaders have been saying about the death of Mama Lucy Kibaki. More will be coming your way. Of course, keep tweeting. Hashtag tribute to Mama Lucy Kibaki. For now, I hand you over back to Safin Achieng. But of course, a little later, join me, Samuel Njeroge, with Nyandarwa County Rep, Wanjiko Mo, Honorable Wanjiko Mohea, and together we shall be talking about the life and time and times of Mama Lucy Kibaki. Thank you so much, uh, Samuel Njeroge, for that. Of course, uh, you can continue to do, uh, send your messages on our social media platforms. We were having a conversation about the role of former First Lady Lucy Kibaki in assisting persons with disabilities in Kenya. And with me in studio, I have been with David Olesango, who is the chairman of the National Council of Persons with Disabilities. He has shared with us a lot about what Mama did for the persons with disabilities in Kenya. And uh, we're just about to learn more about what she played as a, as a, a, a mother, you said. Mm -hmm. You said she represented a mother figure for, for persons with disabilities. Yes, a mother figure, not only to persons with disabilities, but to the whole country. Mm -hmm. Because she was married almost for five decades. Five decades. Yes, mm -hmm. the one husband. So you can imagine if uh, that marriage can last for uh, 50 years and marriages nowadays uh, so she actually was a mother to the whole nation and showing a good example of uh, to be a mother and to be a wife and uh, we really really miss her because she was a person who for us person with disability we saw uh, a role model and a mother because uh, uh, for all weaker members of the society, uh, she was really there for them. Mm -hmm. You remember the uh, the story of bring Zach back home, back home yeah. on a wheelchair to start a spinal injury hospital. She attended uh, the function. She was in uh, constant contact with the organizers of bring Zach back home, and uh, on several occasions, she had been asking, "Where is now Zach?" What level is she is now? Is he, is he past Namanga? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. She wanted to be past. She was. It's, 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 it's something that trended. For yes. For, for yeah. Her. Yeah. And uh, she kept on asking and insisting that uh, this one is a very good initiative. Uh, and we actually, uh, she actually did a lot mm -hmm. with personal disability. And I know for the six million Kenyans living with disability out there, majority of them must have interacted with the uh, first lady, uh, the former first lady, Her Excellency, Mama Lucy Kibaki, in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And of course, in a positive way. Yeah. It have always been in a positive way. And you can see from the messages that are uh, from our leaders, everybody pay tribute to uh, the woman who had a lot of strength, who had a lot of energy, mm -hmm. who had a lot of passion. And you know, she also changed the perception in Kenyan politics. You know, uh, before the year 2003, we didn't see a lot of a uh, first lady. Mm -hmm. And we actually did not know the role that a first lady is supposed to play. Uh, I'm 100% sure uh, our now current first lady, Her Excellency Margaret, Lunch have really learned a lot. Her. Uh, it wow. is not like her 
who she picked the nation that the, the first lady was and, actually and, on and you mentioned mm. something interesting because i believe she was the first uh, first lady to actually just come out in in the limelight you know M most uh, the, the the ones that were there before her would you know play an underground mama Ndina was also playing <laughs> But there was a break of 24 years yes. where we didn't know where the first lady For, was. Yes. And actually, if actually they are supposed to be <laughs> on the limelight. limelight yes. And that is why w w people actually reacted differently when sometimes she did what it was supposed to be done. Okay. And then uh, people say, okay, w w what is happening? You know, they yeah. were not used to the to first that lady kind, yeah, taking the, such roles. Yeah. Wow. So, the last time she mm, was seen uh, mm. uh, in the public limelight mm. was uh, in 2010 during the promulgation of the new constitution. I wonder if between 2010 and uh, that just a few a few moments before she became ill, mm. was she still playing a part in assisting persons with disabilities because she was underground most of the time? Yes. Um, uh, first of all, the the child in question, Stella Wanjiko. She sponsored the child in 2012. 2012. Okay. Yes. So she was still, but you know, Mama Lucy did not want uh, favors from anybody. So she did a lot of good things, uh, but underground. For persons with disability, she continued doing a lot of good things. And uh, her PA specifically was very instrumental in making sure that there is contact and that if we needed anything, then and most DPOs, if they needed anything, there was a contact person to ask that we need this, we need to see the uh, uh, former first lady. But uh, in 2015 and 2014, we didn't really see a lot of her. She, we didn't know where she was, we didn't know her health, so it was very difficult for us also to keep on inquiring that we need an appointment with her and uh, we really didn't know what is what was happening okay mm. so now that uh, you mentioned her to be a very uh, you know important role model especially for the persons with disabilities what lessons do you get from her first of all the lessons uh, we got from her was that we must be firm and that a spade will always be a spade it will never be a big spoon <laughs> and that uh, we need to be straightforward we need to be uh, passionate on the weaker members of our society. We need to assist the weaker members of our society. You don't need to ask for favors. You don't need to be publicized that you have assisted so and so, so that you can gain some political bonga points. No, at times we need to do that one so that we can get favors from God. And if you are seeking favors, as she used to say, if you are seeking favors from human beings, then God will forget about you mm -hmm. because already you have gotten your prize mm -hmm. you have already been awarded but if then you do it underground then god who is who, who will see everything that is being done under the sun will be the one to, to award you. you so wow. for us we have learned a lesson that uh, not everything we do especially for social responsibility that we have to go there and advertise i've assisted so many students i've assisted so many persons with disability if you meet a person with disability on the streets. And it is not on one occasion that she met a person with disability hawking on the streets. And she bought everything from that person with disability. We are sure she may not need those commodities. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them are uh, sweets, some mm -hmm. of them are lollipops. So you can imagine the first lady without uh, those little children, she does not need the lo lollipop mm -hmm. or the handkerchiefs, but she will buy everything. Sometimes you may not need the commodity that person with disability uh, is selling. But for social responsibility and to encourage that person with disability, just smamisha gari yako kubwa, mwambie ni uzie yo handkerchief, ni uzie yo kitu nunua. Yes, if you see a business run by person with disability, most of them are shoe shiners in the street. Please atakama viatu yako ni clean, just simama tu, umeenkari tu, unajua kiwana mapata kazi and apart from your moyo and encouragement. Mm -hmm. If there is a business owned by a person with disability, a kiosk, I ask Kenyans, in social responsibility, you don't have to be in the media. Just go there, assist. Yes, just buy something from those people mm -hmm. so that you can encourage them. If they are, some of them are competitors, they are having, uh, making furniture, mm -hmm. even if you don't need them. You know what, we encourage that person with disability. So, we, musifanya kama kidero, you know, your city has carries. Wakati walifamia ile mama alikuwa kwa wheelchair kumtupa ndani ya 
ya gari you know yeah. you remember the story yes yeah, so when you see when you see such things what yeah. what do you feel uh, you know when i saw i was in rwanda and uh, the, the the video was actually of 2010 but you know i thought it was the current video so i thought now what is happening now kidero i have i've just waited until i've gone to rwanda na kafamia watu wale mavu so <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he said, no, 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 no. Now, Kidero, you have stepped on a live wire. Not even a live wire, you, are, you have sat on a transformer. In fact, you know, I was so annoyed. And, you know, you feel that bitterness. Mm -hmm. You feel that pain. You know, this person has struggled against all odds to, to, to sell living, yeah. on a wheelchair. You know, selling in a wheelchair is not like you. If you go to those city uh, toilets, she'll have to get out of her wheelchair and crawl on a knees to the toilet. I know how dirty they are. And this big person is struggling. And then the city has guys are throwing her into the, against all those words. It was so painful. It was so sad for all of us persons with disabilities. We felt very sad. Mm -hmm. We felt now that um, our mother the, was no longer the first lady. That's why we are being nyanyazwa uh, here and there. So let, me, let, me, let me ask you something also <laughs> that is coming out from this conversation. Yeah. You know, most of the time, mm. uh, persons with disabilities, they need to be assisted, right? Yes. To, to be taken care of, to be nurtured, and to be shown support. Yes. But uh, you, in some cases, you know, some have, have kind of taken a, a, a role of trying to take advantage of their situation to get favors. Is this something you'd agree on, or what would you say about that? Uh, first of all, uh, if you are really a person who knows that there is a living God, you will not take advantage of such a person. Mm -hmm. You will not. But you know, of course, there are people who are being controlled by the, the devil. And actually, they are actually representative of the devil here on earth. And that, those are the people who are taking advantage of persons with disability. We, we, we are also tired of uh, people actually making us more disabled. Because like the issue of accessibility, if all buildings were accessible to persons with disability, like here in KBC when I came, there were ramps uh, in most places where there were staircases. So if a person with disability comes, he will be able to maneuver their way through without necessarily needing your help. But if you put the staircases, you put a barrier then across will, this human being, then this person will become needy and will require your own support. And uh, even if we are persons with disability, we have some little pride left in us. And I really need to do some basic things on myself. But if I have to be carried to the office, I have to be carried to the toilet, I have to be carried here and there, I lose that personal space. And then the moment I lose that personal space, my pride also goes down and my self-esteem goes down. And it's unfortunate that the house that make this laws, parliament, is the same house that is breaking the same laws that is making. Mm -hmm. Because in the, uh, in the Personal Disability Act of 2003, all buildings should be accessible to persons with disability. As we speak now, the office of the Speaker of the National Assembly is not accessible to persons with disability. Have the you, office you, of the majority leader What have you done, have you done to make sure that happens? Disability. We have written letters to them. We have talked with them. We have pleaded with them. They are not listening. And now I think I will have no option but to take the Kenyan style, the kangaroo style of uh, taking 1,000 persons with disability to parliament. Yes, most of them on wheelchairs. So that uh, the leader of majority, Honorable Ndwale, and the speaker of the National Assembly can carry these people on wheelchairs to their offices. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you, Safi, I look for those who have... Eh, who have eaten enough. <laughs> <laughs> so Just yeah. to make them feel the weight. Them, you know, you've, the tried, weight. you've tried to push for this agenda for some time and yes. nothing has happened so yes. far. Nothing has happened. And I remember uh, Mama, the, Mama Lucy, the late Mama Lucy Kibaki, talked passionately about accessibility. Accessibility to information. I remember she talked, uh, I think it was on KBC, I don't remember which channel. Accessibility to information. And we thank KBC and KTN because they have a uh, Kenyan sign language. Because now you are reading news to the members of public, to Kenyans. Yes, some of them are deaf. Mm, they cannot understand. They cannot hear. Mm -hmm. Now they see the president there moving around there. Think, uh, Labor Day, they, they think, okay, salary has been increased. They don't understand what is happening. You know, 
simply because you have made them disabled. Because if you have just that person, the sign language interpreter, who is interpreting to, to them? And it is not very expensive. And when you ask such things, they, they, they don't do, they make us more disabled. Yes, you find a school with uh, teachers and they have a child who is blind and they don't provide brails. They provide textbooks which are written, this child cannot see, and they don't even feel ashamed of even distributing those textbooks. Mm -hmm. You find a school like uh, the school that was for the deaf in Kiambu, which the headmaster was somebody who does not understand sign language. So how did that person communicate with the deaf student in that school? Let me just ask you, you know, mm. you said that, uh, you know, you cannot do something for us if you're not, we are not part of, of, yes. of that process. Mm. What are you doing? Because what are you doing as persons with disabilities to make sure that you are empowered, you, you're given chances, you take opportunity, you take advantage of the opportunities that are there so that you won't have to be put at a place where you will be too needy, like you say. What, what are the initiatives that you're taking, currently working on? Well, Safi, you know, Kenya, you a lot. It is very difficult to push some of these things. Sasa unasikia pesa ya wale mavu, 1.2 billion, inataka kuchukulua tena kutoka wale mavu. You know, there's that perception that persons with disability are very useless. In fact, they, use, they call us disabled. You know, when you are to call a disabled person, not a person with disability, you are disabled. Yani, wewe ufanyi kitu. Yeah? You are referred in a name that is demeaning. Kiwete. Yeah? Kisiwi. Kipofu. Those are names that are referred to non-living things like kitanda. You know, ki. Kitanda, ki, kiti, and such things. Mm -hmm. So there is, a percep there is a perception that persons with disability cannot even support themselves. So you find that um, even from the, our parent ministry, as a saga, as a semi-autonomous government agency, National Council for Persons with Disability, our parent ministry is the Ministry of Labor. While watu wenye wamefinya wale mafu saidi cartels wenye wako kwa Ministry of, wako kwa ministry of Labor. Mm -hmm. Yes? The worst cartels, you know? You know, and I don't know why Ethical and Corruption Authority is not seeing this type of corruption. Because we only see the corruption where money is lost. But you don't see the, the, uh, the corruption where opportunity is lost. So, because so, if so. opportunity is lost, it is lost with money. Like now when there is an international forum for persons with disability. Yes, mm -hmm. they are supposed to send people with disability so that they can interact with the rest. They can learn new uh, ways of doing things in various countries all over the world. They can uh, maybe uh, get donors who can donate uh, uh, assisted devices to persons with disability, who can donate technology because we know what we import is actually uh, suited. Maybe the assisted devices that we import is suited for a terrain that is not the terrain that is in Kenya. So we can go and interact. Now when they send people without disability, they will not go and interact Present. with those people. They have already taken the opportunity of this individual to interact. They have so taken the allowance. What are you doing? Point. What are you doing to make sure that you are empowered and you have the strength and the skills and the abilities to prove mm. that you can control the money that is given to persons with disabilities and that you can take advantage of the opportunities that are given to persons with disabilities so that there won't have to be, you know, any problem in the near future when it comes to such issues. Yes, of course, as, a, as a normal and a, as a level-headed Kenyan, what we normally use is diplomas and uh, negotiate and uh, have roundtable uh, meetings mm -hmm. and uh, uh, explain that Mugui mevunjika lakini akili iko timam. Na kwa sababu, we are not going to these forums to, to, to Boston Marathon. To, to no. run a war. Yes, rugby. <laughs> Give us these opportunities. Okay. We have been uh, talking. We have even written a letter to His Excellency, the President uh, Uhuru, that whenever he goes out with a delegation of Kenyans to represent Kenyans, if it is a, a forum of environmental, a tourist forum or whatever, let him go with Kenyans. And Kenyans mean part of the population, which is 15%, are living with disability. So with that little mathematics, which is not rocket science, which a child of class five can understand, then the president should understand that whenever they have the delegation, 15% of that delegation should be persons with disabilities. Persons with disabilities. Translating that if she, the president is going out to represent Kenyans, and he have 100 members in the entourage or in the delegation, 
then 15 members should be person which is not rocket science be part of yes thank you so much uh, yeah. we, we've just run out of time but it has been very great having you with us in studio now we understand what role uh, mama former first lady mama lucy kibaki did to help people with disabilities great in role. kenya thank you so much uh, samuel joroge is coming up uh, to continue just paying tribute to former first lady Lu uh, lucy kibaki you want to stay tuned to hear what now women have to say concerning her role in assisting women in kenya stay tuned for more my name is safin aching oh